वेलकम बैक आई एम सॉरी इन द लास्ट वन एंड हाफ मंथ अबाउट सिक्स वीक्स आई बिन अवे फ्रॉम माई यूट्यूब चैनल यू नो आई कुन गिव यू ए समथिंग न्यू और ऑन द एस पी डॉट नेट कोर सिक्योरिटी एंड आइडेंटिटी विच आर स्टार्टेड सो दिस आई हैव अगेन पिक अप माई थ्रेड्स बिकॉज आई हैव जस्ट रिसेंटली पब्लिश माई यूडेमी कोर्स मास्टर सी शार्प कलेक्शन एंड आई विल पुट दट लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दिस वीडियो बिलो and then coming back to business again so this is based on my earlier three tutorial three part tutorial on asp.net core uh, identity and security so if you have gone through those three parts uh, that that is great otherwise i highly recommend you to go through them because um, this tutorial is built on a web solution asp.net core web application on which i'll be explaining further about how to configure core identity so stay on so asp.net core identity uses default values for password policy lockout cookie configuration and we can use override these settings in the startup class and to configure the identity system the options represented by the identity identity options class are used and we have to call either add identity or add default identity first and then set the identity options so identity options dot claims identity property specifies the claims identity options with the following properties now there is a tabular form in which i have written down the properties and then the description of the property and the default value so if it is you can see having a quick read it will say that it is a role claim type if it is a role claim type it gets or sets the claim type used for a role claim and the default value is claim types dot role where the claim uri that specifies the role of an entity the claim is the claim uri uniform resource indicator that specifies the role of an entity security stamp claim type is it gets or sets the claim type used for the security stamp claim and asp.net identity dot security stamp is the default value similarly you have got user id claim type and username claim type which you can read and the this um, article the this video tutorial is based on microsoft original documentation which is again thanks to them and i have put the link to that um, original documentation uh, you could increase your knowledge by going through that original documentation so so on this slide you can see that lockout is set in the password sign in async method in the code snippet below so public async task i action which returns a task of uh, type i action result and the method it operates on the method on post async so it is an asynchronous method and if model state dot is valid uh, then you can see that in you know, a sign sign in manager object calls the password sign in async method and here it sets the lockout on failure false so it is just a it's not the full code it's just a snippet of the code so let me flip over to visual studio again and show you uh, what this code is i think this code is should be familiar to those um, subscriber those um, people those students of asp.net core um, who have seen the earlier at least two tutorials of this series and i think it was already shown that you know um, i have actually built this web app one this is the web app one under the solution web app one to confirm with microsoft original documentation and here it is set to be equal to true lockout on failure true however if you look into the um, um this slide lockout on failure is uh, set to be false so you can just set it out in this password sign in async method okay also as you can see lockout options are set in the configure services method of the startup class so i will again uh, tally the code that is i that is put over here in this slide 
with the Visual Studio solution that we have already created and explained in the last couple of tutorials. So services, you know, this is, let's, I think it is a good time to flip over back and forth. So this is the startup class. And if you look into this services.configure, identity option object it takes and this is the options um, parameter and the lambda operator so services.configure services.configure you can say identity options so default lockout setting so this is the default lockout setting right so startup class services.configure this is the password setting which will come back next and this is the lockout setting so we have already gone through this lockout settings so this is the options is an identity options type of object dot lockout lockout property. So it returns lockout options type dot default lockout time span. Okay. So these are the properties of the lockout um, lockout lockout is also a property which returns and lockout options. So see there. These are the properties of the lockout options class, right? So that's what I have written over here. So options dot lockout dot default lockout time span. That is this one. Similarly, options dot lockout dot max field access attempts. And the last one is options dot lockout dot allowed for new users equal to true. Now, as these are quite uh, you know, uh, suggestive, these, uh, the name of these properties suggest what they are up to, you know, what they are doing. So I think you might have already guessed that, you know, this is setting the default lockout time span and this is setting up the maximum field access attempts. And this one is setting whether it is allowed for new users. Lockout setting is allowed for new users, whether it is true or false. So you have set it as true here. Now, next is this code sets the options you can use to configure the identity system lockout property and a successful authentication which means successful login resets the field access attempts counts and resets the clock so if you have earlier say been unsuccessful twice but the um, um, you have not been logged out in the third attempt you have successfully logged in then that login will reset the failed access attempts and attempts counts and resets the clock. Okay. And the next one is password. So this is the password setting. This is the same piece of code, which I've also explained earlier, but it is going to reinforce because the Microsoft, uh, you know, the documentation on which this is based, which is again given in the description is, you know, progressing in this manner, you know, so now it is, uh, that's how I am showing in that sequence, I am configuring the ASP.NET Core identity, which was already done, but I am basically explaining. So password by default identify. Now identity requires the passwords, this identity, because we are setting the, we are configuring the identity. That identity requires that passwords contain an uppercase character, a lowercase character, a digit, a non-alphanumeric character. Password must be at least six character long, uh, have a unique character. Okay, so that's all set over here in this part of the startup class within the configure method. Okay, so I think it is a good idea to go over these things a couple of times to reinforce the concepts which you, you might have already learned um, in the last lecture or so. Um, so, this is again the same piece of code. Now there is a password, I will do that sign in later. So in a nutshell, let's stop here. So what we have seen is that, you know, we have uh, actually seen the, how to configure the ASP.NET Core identity for password and lockout options. All right, so password and lockout option. So see you more next time.